Good morning, everyone. Today is 21 May, the year 2005. I'm Dr. Dave Thompson, a volunteer at the Palm Springs Air Museum here in California. Part of our mission is to record and preserve the history of our country's military conflicts, especially World War II. As part of the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in those conflicts. Today, I'm here at the museum along with fellow volunteer Bob Andrade and special guest Ken Albright. Today, we have the honor and the privilege of interviewing Lieutenant Gottfried P. Dubius. Lieutenant Dubius was an ME-109 Luftwaffe pilot during World War II. He was shot down by Russian ground fire near Budapest, Hungary, and was captured by the Russians, spending several years as a POW. So we're going to talk to him about that and a lot of other things. Nice to have you here, Godfrey. Now, can you, you, I'll, I'll, I'll get <clears throat> um, can you uh, spell your full name for us, please? Uh, my name is Godfrey P. Dulias. Not, not to, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to this one. Uh, to, to Lias is D like in David, U-L-I-A-S. And the first name is Gottfried, G-O-T-T-F-R-I-E-D. Okay. And how, what did you say, Gottfried? How, what Paul is Dulias. Gottfried Paul Dulias. Yeah. But Gottfried uh, stands for? Oh, yeah. My, my name translated into English. God is God, and Fried is peace. So my name is God's peace. That's great. That's great. And um, when and where were you born? I was born in Königsberg, East Prussia, uh, which is a town that is now called Kaliningrad and is Russian, Russia. because at the Yalta Conference uh, they uh, uh, cut up Germany and. Uh, so that was in east. That was like in east, what we call and east Germany. Northeast, uh, was northeast Germany. Right? Uh, east Prussia was called the land of thousand lakes. You know? oh, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, K Königsberg was the capital of East Prussia, and um, that's where I was, was born. born. Yeah. What was your father's name? My father's name was Paul Dulias, and he was uh, working for the uh, German railroad, which is government owned. So he was a government. And worked himself up from uh, from an engineer, uh, a, a machine engineer, not 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 the engineer like you call here a locomotive driver. You know, <laughs> no, uh, uh, that was my grandfather. He was a locomotive was. driver, oh. my my father's father. But he, uh, my father, uh, um, after visiting the uh, machine building school in Satin. Uh, he was a full-fledged uh, machine engineer and was then uh, hired there by the uh, uh, German Railroad and uh, worked himself up to uh, later on to Reichsbahnrat. Uh, that is, uh, it was practically second in command of the entire German Railroad. Did you have any relatives who fought during World War I? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, my father. Was, yes. He was in the artillery, uh, the heavy, the heavy railroad uh, oh. artillery with the, yeah. the tw 21 uh, centimeter uh, gun. Some of those I think went all the way to London. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, he, uh, my father was in uh, World War uh, One, and also some of my father's uh, uh, cousins, you know, uh, some, some of my uncles, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, one of them, as a matter of fact, was uh, uh, Kurt, Kurt Balzer, he was uh, in, the, uh, uh, in, the, in the flying branch. Uh, oh, he was? Branch. Yeah, oh, he yeah, was. Yeah, oh. Yeah. I, I forgot what, what uh, uh, um, outfit he was yes, in, yeah. you know, but uh, I know that he, he flew and I, I, I don't even remember how many infantrys he had. You know. yeah, well, one of our volunteers here is, has a big interest in World War II aviation, so he's here this morning with me. We'll talk to him a little bit about right. that when okay. you get that. Yeah. Um, did, um, uh, and your mother, what was her name and her my, maiden name? My mother's name is Lucy Reschke. She was the only child of my grandparents, uh, 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 Franz Reschke and uh, Elise Reschke, my, my grandmother. And, uh, uh, she, uh, my father was uh, uh, 
34, and he got, no, no, yeah, no, 34 or 32, I don't know. They were 14 years apart. Oh. My, my mother was born in 1901, and my father was born in 1887. So uh, when they got married, my, my mother was 18 years old. Oh, oh. So, uh, and did she grow up in the same town as your dad? Oh, yes, was also in Königsberg, and my, my grandfather, on uh, mother's side, he was a, a very uh, a, a wealthy uh, businessman. Mm -hmm. uh, he had um, uh, a business for building materials to sell, and uh, uh, he was uh, in, in building. Uh, yeah, um, have you traced your ancestry back very far? Do you oh, yes. How yes, far? Yeah. Or? My father did uh, uh, searching uh, back, uh, that's where our name comes from, from the French Huguenots. Oh. And they, 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 they uh, 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 searched it back to the uh, um, Dulia family that came originally from the town of Nice in, mm -hmm. in uh, France, yes. right by the oh. Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean uh, Sea. Yes. And, um, uh, there's also a little town that's called Dulias and has a castle that mm -hmm. was uh, from our uh, family. Oh, yeah. uh, a, a cousin of mine uh, did further uh, um, uh, searching uh, about the, the, uh, uh, our um, ancestry and he went to France, took pictures there, he even went to the cemetery and found there from the way back at uh, Dulias. Uh, yeah. you know, all, uh, in, in Do you, you know, I guess they came around the Reformation time then, from yes, the 1400s, yes. 1500s, right. when they yeah, were, The think, king of Prussia uh, gave them a, a, a free land to repopulate East Prussia because East Prussia was very much decimated uh, due to the pestilence. Hmm. And most of the population died, uh, you know, and so uh, the King of Prussia wanted to have more uh, uh, people uh, uh, you know, uh, take, take the land and make it something from it, you know. And so the, these uh, um, uh, French Huguenots, you know, they came and brought also their trades and knowledge uh, and hmm. culture uh, with them, you know, and so that's why a lot of uh, uh, of names as well as uh, um, uh, some, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the culture, you know, that uh, uh, w what they brought from, from France, so they, they brought back uh, to, to, to East Prussia, and there were uh, uh, trades that uh, did not even exist uh, uh, before, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, they, they were a, a great asset then, uh, yeah. to, to the, the Prussian. I think in, here in the United States, I might. I think it's in Pennsylvania. There's a town called King of Prussia. Have you ever yes. heard of it? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Do you know how they got that name or anything? I don't know how they got that name. I was often <laughs> wondering. Uh, king of Prussia. That is uh, Frederick the Great. You know, he oh, was the King of Prussia. Yeah. And he was uh, called in Germany the Soldatenkönig, the, the soldier's king. You know? <laughs> yeah, because he he had the army there, the Hessian, yeah. that, that came here even to to America with, uh, with right. uh, 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 von Schreuben, General von Schreuben, you know. Yeah, uh, they were the ones that uh, when Washington crossed the Delaware, I think right. he captured some of them, right. as I recall, in yeah. Trenton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, um, um, did you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I had, uh, uh, I had one, or have still, one older sister, four years older than I am. And what's her name? I, I will be next month, will be 80. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I had an, a, a brother who was two years older than I. And uh, then I, uh, I uh, was born. Then after me, I had two more sisters. We were all two years <laughs> apart. My <laughs> older sister uh, born in 21, my brother in, in uh, 23, I am 25. Uh, the next is uh, <laughs> 27 and the other one 29, so it was like clockwork. Yeah, yeah, really. And what were their names? Uh, my older sister is Ursula, and uh, my brother, uh, uh, the brother's name uh, uh, was uh, Uli, Ulrich, Ulrich, uh, but in German you say Uli, oh. Uli, you know. And uh, uh, my name is Gottfried, and then uh, uh, my next sister is Gisela, and the youngest sister is Gerda, you know. So uh, Gerda and Ursula both live here in the United States now. Yeah, they do. Yeah.
My uh, uh, two years younger sister Gisela, she is unfortunately in an old age home with uh, a Parkinson's disease, uh, very advanced already. So, and uh, she may even have uh, Alzheimer's too because uh, she doesn't recognize anything anymore. When you were your family growing up, were you very religious? Did you guys go to church a lot? Uh, yes. Uh, well, we, uh, my, my father and mother uh, were very con uh, confirmed Protestant, Protestant, yes. yeah, Protestant or Lutheran. Lutheran, Lutheran. Lutheran. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, uh, so we went to church every every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in the book that I, I wrote about my whole life story, I, 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 I have that all uh, described in there, oh, okay, you know, we'll how, how we celebrated Christmas and all the traditions and all, mm -hmm. and uh, also the prevailing history that uh, was at the time when I grew up is all written into the book. So my book is not just only uh, entertaining, it's also uh, educational. You know. So a Christmas tree, you had a Christmas tree? Yes, oh. the Weihnachtsbaum. And what about a Yule log? Did, did you have those? Now Yule log, that that, that is uh, that, that is uh, something more in Sweden. More Sweden. Uh, that okay. was more traditional in Sweden. But the Christmas tree uh, didn't kind of originate in Germany, as far as I know. Did the Germans were they the first ones that had Christmas trees? As far as I know, yes, yeah. I think so. That was the the, uh, the Christmas tree was in, uh, decorated uh, with all kinds of. Uh, uh, Decoration there, right. mostly blown glass balls, you know, mm -hmm. and live candles. They always had live candles on the Christmas tree, and I still did oh. that tradition here now. You know, <laughs> and everybody said, "Oh, you have live candles on you. You burned the house down." You know. <laughs> no, it's uh, when you are careful and you have the the right uh, equipment, the, the way they set up, then nothing will happen. You know? yeah. <laughs> The um, you kids when you were growing up, or what did you do for? Uh, did you? Uh, well, first of all, how large was the town that you lived in? Oh, K Königsberg was a, uh, was the largest uh, town in East Prussia. It was the capital of East Prussia. Yeah. Had also a, 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 a castle uh, for the Kaiser a Schloss, oh. Kaiser Schloss, you know, which uh, uh, was very heavily bombed uh, during the war and. Um, uh, the Russians uh, tore it and down, you know, so. Oh. And um, um, so you lived right in the town? We lived right right in town. I was born at, at home, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. I was born at home, uh, uh, right at the Pregel River that runs right through oh. Königsberg. And uh, there we had a, a, a big uh, apartment house that belonged to my grandfather. He had also his office there in, in the ground floor, and we had the first floor uh, uh, apartment there. You know. and, and when you uh, were growing up, what kind of what did you do for fun? I mean, what kind of you do? Oh, for for fun, and, oh, playing. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, like. Uh, did you get a lot of snow? Uh, uh, yes. Did. Oh, in East Prussia, they have uh, very cold and yeah. heavy winters. I but see, they have did very you? hot. Summers, the yeah. summers too. You know. But mostly during the summertime, uh, our family was always at the Baltic Sea Resort. You know. uh -huh. uh, we, we, we spent the whole the whole summer there, you know. Right. And uh, uh, we had fun at the beach, you know, especially if they were looking for Bernstein uh, amber. Amber you found right oh, on really? the beach there, uh -huh. and all, all kinds of sizes and yeah. pieces. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, as kids, you do all kinds of games. You were building sand castles there, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> it was generally a lot, lot of fun that we had as as young uh, children, you know. So uh, um, and, and also, I, I went with the fishermen. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, we we, we were renting a, a, an apartment for the whole summer by a, a, a big fisherman family there. And they had uh, these f fisher boats, they, they went uh, out every day, and then uh, it, early in the morning at sun up, you know, and then they came back in the what, afternoon. What kind of fish would they be catching? Oh, they had all, all kinds of fish. They had uh, fl flounders, uh, eels, uh, uh, a steinbutt, which is uh, a fluke, mm -hmm. and they have also a, a bigger one uh, that, uh, uh, that, that, that's the, 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 the fluke is actually called the Scholle, 
and the Steinboot is a real big one. It, 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 it's something like mm. three feet wide or so. That, yeah. uh, it's like a, a big flounder. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was called Steinboot. You know? And uh, uh, then, of course, uh, uh, they had uh, herring. Which, uh, which they, they, they smoke right uh, at the uh, at the beach and sprutten the sprouts, you know. Oh yeah, uh, uh, that, that was especially the, the the eel, smoked oh, eel there. Oh, oh that was delicious. <laughs> and your mother was a good cook. Oh, my mother, yes, she had a, a, a training in a higher daughter's school. You know. Of course, uh, uh, you, uh, you had to have rich parents to to pay for the schooling. So she had complete. Uh, uh, training there, and she was an excellent cook. What did what were some of the things she fixed that you liked best? Uh, well, mostly she 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 cooked what my father liked, and I didn't like that. <laughs> you know, for instance, uh, uh, red, red beet soup with with uh, with uh, uh, um, uh, ba uh, smoked bacon uh, pieces in there. I I hated that smoked bacon. <laughs> also, the the salad when she made green salad uh, instead of putting oil. Uh, or vinegar, the, uh, the smoked bacon got uh, fried in the, in the pan, and oh, I couldn't stand it. I had to gag all the time. But my father made me eat it. You know, I had to, I had to clean my plate. You know, oh yeah. Now, what 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 I like best? Uh, that was the uh, um, uh, as far as the cakes are concerned, the Bienenstich, the bee, bee stinger. That is a, a cake of uh, you know, it's a. a, a Yeast cake, yeast dough, uh, and it has some uh, uh, sugar crumbs in there with almonds, uh, mm -hmm. chopped uh, mm -hmm. almonds in there. You know, and that that, that was my my favorite. Uh, what she made, and yeah. then of course chocolate and kuchen. You know, it's a big chocolate cake here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and, uh, uh, and as far as uh, as meals are concerned, my my favorite was uh, uh, Kalbsbrust. That's uh, um, uh, real real. Uh, uh, real chest, you know, oh, yeah. stuffed uh -huh. ones, you know. Oh. And uh, uh, oh, she, she was she was an excellent cook. I I would say, she, she, if she would have been a chef, in, in a in a very fancy restaurant, that it could have done that. That's yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. during the depression, yeah, I know you were growing up, and it was very bad here. But I understand it was much worse even in Germany. In Germany, well, did, the depression was actually right after World War One. You know? Yes. So that was uh, uh, even before I was born, in 1920, 21, 22. Then that's where. So they, it even started that, way before ours did. That's then. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and, and then uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I, um, I I remember that my, my grandfather gave me these uh, old million million mark sh uh, shines there, a uh, 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 million mark bills. You know, yeah. a shine is in German, I, I, a Geldschein. You know, um, so he, he said, well, at at, at one uh, one time you could buy like a, a loaf of bread with this, and and a, a few hours later. You, 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 could, you couldn't even buy a slice of the bread for it, you know. So it was constantly going uh, going down, you know. So it was, was interesting to know, but I, I myself did not uh, experience, because by the time I was born, 1925, the, the depression was over, you know. Oh, it started funny. going slowly uh, upwards, you know. So yeah. even before Hitler came, came into power, yeah. I mean, a lot of, you know, we think that the things that he did kind of took Germany out of the depression, but it, it was really on its way out. Anyhow. It was on its way anyway, but also with his with his doing, because he he founded that uh, 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 Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, that the NSDAP, or uh, the Nazi Party, as they call it. You know, right. Yeah. The, the Workers Party, the you know, National uh, Workers Party, and uh, uh, since he did a lot of um, uh, you know. Uh, uh, for, for the economy to, to get up, uh, the people liked him, and he did a lot. Uh, there was at, at one time, and uh, before the war started, there was no more unemployment. There were, were, were even shortage of, of labor that they, they uh, took uh, foreigners in to to, uh, uh, to work. You know, and um, so he was very popular because he did a lot. The the, uh, the, the workmen they could afford their own home now. The, the, the housing, he did that. 
he had uh, Professor Ferdinand Porsche uh, design the Volkswagen on his uh, idea that there should be a car that every workman can afford. And it was then, uh, before the war, available for 800 marks. So every workman could, could uh, easily afford a car and their home. And of course, that, uh, that made them very popular and I, everybody was voting for it. You know. yeah. Later on, of course, uh, as it developed and he became power happy and all, though, then uh, with the war starting and all. Uh, but even for uh, starting the war, that was um, because they, 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 uh, Poland had, after World War I, got a piece of land that cut East Prussia off from the rest of Germany and was uh, called the Polish Corridor and, and uh, 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 near Danzig. Uh, Danzig. Oh, right. yeah. And uh, so the German uh, uh, people from the Reich going to East Prussia had to go in, in a train and to pull the shades down. They were not allowed to look out and often the Poles uh, stopped the train and, and pulled people off and you never heard from them again, you know. Mm. And, uh, and, and they were also very uh, uh, cocky, you know. They, they were even shooting over the border at, at German far farmers behind the plow, you know. And, and uh, so then uh, Hitler uh, said, well, that cannot go on that way. So, so he started that uh, marching into Poland and to teach them a lesson, you know. Now, uh, since Poland was in, in, a, in a pact with, uh, with France and England, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as partners, so France and England had to declare war on Germany, yeah. and that, and then later on, uh, America got <laughs> into it. You know, so that's how how it, uh, it came into it. But in, in my opinion, uh, not only that, but um, in my opinion, mostly it, the reason for World War II was a fight for the world market, because. Everything made in Germany was the best that you could buy all over the world. And at the same time, it was the cheapest too. It was inexpensive. And here in America, the big businessmen, they were sitting on four warehouses, couldn't sell their stuff. You know. And everybody bought made in Germany. They, they not only exported uh, things, but also exported uh, like uh, intelligence and, and, uh, and uh, uh, like a bridge building and, and uh, 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 the new technique that, that Germany uh, uh, developed, you know. So everybody was looking for German engineers and made in Germany that was the best you could buy. So therefore, Germany became too uh, powerful on the world market. And all the others couldn't sell their stuff. Something had to give. So that was then that they found uh, Hitler you know, as a scapegoat and, and say, well, uh, you know, <laughs> say that, uh, he started a war and, and uh, well, that, I mean, that's my, my opinion. I don't know what, what the, the real reason is, but that's what I think it was a fight for the world market. Germany became too powerful on the world market. Something had to give. So. And, and where did you go to school, and how's the school set up? Is oh, yeah. it similar well, to what it is here? Uh, I went to, to the Pestalozzi uh, school, as a public school in Germany, and uh, they, uh, uh, you had to be, uh, to get to eight classes, uh, you know, to, to stay just in public school. But if you wanted to, to go into high school uh, or uh, gymnasium, uh, they call it the Oberschule or gy gymnasium, um, then uh, you had to go after the fourth uh, uh, public school class, you had to start in the high school class, you know. And uh, I, I, in the meantime, when we uh, moved from Königsberg to Osterode, that was uh, my father uh, had an, a promotion and, and uh, had then, um, um, uh, he was second in command of the German railroad repair works. Yeah, there's a big plant. Yeah, that was that still in East Prussia? That yeah, was still in East Prussia, was okay. holding, yes. And uh, there we moved uh, in 1934. Uh, we moved from Königsberg to uh, Osterode. And then uh, there we lived four years. And that's where I started then the high school or uh, gymnasium. It's a high school. It's, uh, it's like, uh, we call it Oberschule. 
in the Oberschule they start learning English from the first grade on. Mm -hmm. In the gymnasium where I was, the Kaiser Wilhelm G Gymnasium in Osterode, we started with Latin. And I <laughs> disliked that, you know, so what I need that stuff for, you know. <laughs> had, you, had you been taking English prior to that? Uh, no, no. So you still that. didn't speak so English at all? We, when we moved in 1938, my father got promoted again to Reichsbahnrat to Munich. Oh. And we lived then uh, in Fürstenfabruck near Munich uh, uh, in, in, at that time. And that was 1938. And uh, uh, there, I uh, uh, they, they didn't have the gymnasium, so that they had the Oberschule. So now I was two, uh, two years behind in English, and uh, uh, but I was ahead in Latin. You know, because <laughs> Latin came uh -huh. later. So uh, uh, so I, I had to get tutoring uh, 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 to, to catch up on that, and also with the uh, with the mathematics, we had one mathematics pro professor there. He had a beard, and he was spoken, uh, speaking a uh, 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 Bavarian dialect, and I couldn't understand him at all. <laughs> so I failed in mathematics <laughs> in, in, in that one one school, yeah. Oberschule. So my father put me then in another Oberschule, and uh, there they had uh, German-speaking <laughs> <laughs> professors there, you know. And they was doing them better. You know. Yeah. When you were in Munich, did you ever see Hitler? Did he come yes, to Munich? Yes. Yes. In nineteen uh, thirty, what was it? Thirty eight or thirty nine? When when Mussolini and Hitler had uh, with Daladier uh, and and uh, uh, Chamberlain uh, oh, in, yeah. in, in the conference in Munich, mm -hmm. I remember that our class was uh, standing uh, on on the on the side of the road, and we saw the. the uh, uh, parade go by there, you know, very slow. You know. So that was the only time I saw Hitler, you know. Uh, Hitler, Goering, and, and also Chamberlain and, and Delage, you know, the, the, the French uh, right. uh, minister. You know. Yeah, um, yeah that, 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 was, uh, that was exciting, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay, so you were, uh, you, you were go we were talking about you were going to school on September 1st, that's when we kind of think World War II started when we right. went into Poland. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so that's when you found out about that, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of now course, that, uh, we, we knew already because it, uh, it um, uh, that the news came always about this. Uh, that the Poles were so so cocky that they, they took people off the train there and and, mm -hmm. uh, and were shooting over the over the border. And then, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, Goebbels with the propaganda, uh, you know, played it up, you know, so that. Uh, that uh, most Germans were, were all for it to teach the Poles a lesson, you know, so... Uh, so mo they didn't think it would develop into to what, how it, it yeah, became. Of you thought maybe it would just be a little police action or something in Poland and that would... Yeah, be, that, that's right. That, that's what we thought it would be, you know, Poland. No, no, but since Poland and, and uh, with, with France and, yeah. and England were in a pact yeah. together, so, uh, France de declared war, and then uh, uh, in England uh, right. declared war too, and that's why then finally uh, uh, the, the Germans, uh, you know, started on there. Now uh, you were, I think, just about didn't all the kid children pretty much have to be in the Hitler Youth? Oh yes, were, and it was mandatory. I mean, even and the Jewish children, because I know some. Right, who, who, right. Who oh were. yes, when you were ten years old, you had to join. And it the was. Hitler Youth. I, I, as I understand, it was similar to the YMCA that we have here, well, perhaps. Uh, not the YMCA, it was like the Boy Scouts. Or Boy Scouts. The Boy, yeah, Scouts. Boy Scouts, yeah. And also the Girl Scouts, they had the same same way. They called yeah. it uh, uh, the, the BDM, uh, Bund Deutscher Mädel, yeah. you know, Mädel, uh, the, uh, the uh, associate, Association of German uh, uh, Female Girls, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was mandatory. With 10 years you had to join the, the uh, Hitler did, did, Youth. That was called the Jungvolk, the young, the did, young folks. Did you enjoy that? Being in oh it? yes, that was, that was nice, you know. And I, we went camping there and I'd play soldiers and all that. That was exciting. It was very, very nice. You know? uh -huh. And I uh, went into parades and uh, uh, so it, it, it was uh, was fun. The same like here, the boys like uh, to sure. be a boy scout, you know, right. and yeah. it is the, the equivalent for it, you know. Yeah. And the same with the girl scouts, you know. 
So uh, that, uh, besides, it was mandatory. Now the Jungvolk, that is when you were 10 up to 14 years old, you were in the Jungvolk. That was the younger uh, uh, Boy Scouts. And then they have the, the older ones, which is called the Hajjot, Hitler Youth, H, HJ, the HJ, Hajjot. And uh, uh, that, that uh, you, you got taken in tow when you were 14 years old. You know? So uh, uh, in in uh, 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 that was the 19 let's see, when I was 14 that was 1939 yeah then then I had to join the, the bigger Hitler Youth and uh, later on when I was uh, uh, 16 I, I I heard about the uh, Hitler Youth uh, flying branch where we had already glider training, which is the pre-military training, which was required anyway to be a pilot. You know? Yeah, sure. So even as a, as a boy back in Königsberg, I was watching always the planes going over, and I, I wished I would be there too, <laughs> up in the air. You know? so that, I know. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you, um, did you or any of your family go to the 1936 Olympics in Berlin? No, no, no. We just saw it uh, uh, in a movie because uh, there was no television yet. You know, yeah. we heard it on the news and so so on in the paper. And uh, but uh, no, no, we read not. That, that. Uh, yeah. what's her name? Lenny Riefenstahl. That Lenny uh, Riefenstahl. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. she was a filmmaker they, and did a lot yeah, of that. So, yeah, and yeah. also the, uh, the, the flew the, the, the first helicopter in inside. A, a building in oh, yeah. the Deutschland Halle in, in Berlin that was the, yeah. had the helicopter there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so obviously this that got your interest in, in oh, yeah. our, our, our maybe you, all, you always, always had yeah. uh, interest in that. And so yeah. tell me a little bit about you were like 16, you say, when you started your glider yes. training. Yeah. yeah. And so it's what did you do for? I mean, well, how did since first Fabrook was also the place that had the. Uh, uh, L, uh, LKS number uh, number four, that is LKS Luftkriegsschule or Air War School or Air Academy from the Air, Air Force. And what year was that when you were 16 then? When, yeah. What year was that when you first started uh, taking your uh, uh, 16, that was then, uh, um, <laughs> 16, let me see. Well, let me see, you were born in. Uh, when I was 16, that was, must have been 19, uh, 1941. Yeah. Okay, so the war, the war had been going on for yes. some time. Oh, yes, yeah. That was in the meantime, they, they, they occupied France, and in four weeks they had whole France uh, right. occupied. You know. yeah. So, and then of course that was a big morale boost, you know. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and then Hill became so, uh, so uh, uh, power happy, though, that he wanted to create a United States of Europe under German leadership, similar to the United States here in America. So he wanted to create the United States of Europe under German le leadership, naturally, you know. So uh, in a way, it is, it is happening now with the Euro. The Euro, the Euro is uh, <laughs> in all the European countries, there, you know. And that is, that is part of what, what Hitler had in mind, you know. <laughs> of course, and, uh, at that time it was, you know, <laughs> Uh, a, a pipe dream, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, still, it's uh, that he um, the, um, achieved that much. You know? The propaganda. Well, because you were in, the propaganda at home. Yeah. I mean, did they? Did you know things were going as badly as they were when they started going badly? As far as like trying to well, England, trying, try, you know, try, you know, the Battle of Britain, all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. As the war went on, and and then of course uh, some battles were lost in uh, Stalingrad right. and all that. Then uh, the German uh, population you know, started to get very uh, uh, being against the war. It's dragging on too long is enough, and. Uh, uh, even um, when I went home and in, uh, in furlough, I, I, I had to wear civilian clothes because uh, uh, if you wore a uniform there and uh, uh, you, you were a war cr criminal, you know. So, mm. so that uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> you, 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 you fight on the war for your fatherland and then you come home and, and be called a war cr criminal, you know. No, that, that's not. <laughs>
Our friend Tom Henry here probably yeah. knows a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then, so when did you actually join the the, uh, the Luftwaffe? Then, how did that come about? Well, uh, first of all, I had to join the Arbeitsdienst, which is a German labor force, and uh, that is also mandatory. Anyone that in, in, uh, to the uh, service had to go through the Arbeitsdienst which uh, was a uniform pre-military uh, outfit and uh, uh, we, we, we uh, did uh, some, some work, uh, buildings or, or reinforcement or something, uh, uh, anything, you know, uh, that the government needed. For instance, uh, our uh, group was sent to uh, uh, France on the, in the Bretagne near Brest to, to build reinforcement there or bunkers, you know, for, for it. But we, we never got to it. The, the orders never came through. So we were just uh, standing there uh, and, and uh, 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 had just military, pre-military training. We learned how to throw hand grenades and, uh, and, and, and also I, I was shooting the first time uh, with a real gun. Uh, that was uh, when uh, a, a British uh, uh, plane uh, was shot down right near our uh, uh, outfit there, and uh, 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 in, in, in the Bretagne they have these uh, fields. They are divided by little stone walls mm -hmm. each, you know, and, uh, and that plane went down there and uh, uh, it didn't bur it didn't burn it didn't burn, but it was completely smashed up at the two. Uh, pilots and then they, they got killed, you know. So and uh, so they they, uh, they 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 got buried then in a in a, a, a hero's uh, um, Friedhof, <laughs> you know, in a hero's uh, cemetery. Oh you know, yeah, and, uh, with military honors. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I and I was one of the guards that had to guard the wreckage for overnight because the the the, the French uh, came there and wanted to 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 steal something, you know. So and I, I was uh, in the middle of the night there, then I heard heard some movement there, there's a halt uh, or, or I will shoot, you know, and, and it kept on, on making more noise and I couldn't see, it was all dark, it was not even the moon was out. And uh, so I was in the direction where I heard the sound, I gave him a couple of shots, you know. But then uh, next uh, next morning at uh, daylight, I uh, didn't see any. May have been an animal or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so that was the first time I, I shot the guns, you know. Yeah. 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 And of, of course, that was in a, in a labor force. That was not actually the military, but we did have military training already there. You know. And uh, that that was that was uh, you know exciting. You know. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, as I said, we did not. Uh, get to any work. We, we were just uh, like in between uh, waiting time there because the uh, construction uh, that didn't go on. But did you? Can you? Could you apply to the Luftwaffe? I mean, how, yes. It, oh yeah. I so before you, before, you before that, that, before I went to the Arbeitsdienst, I applied for uh, uh, pilot training in the Luftwaffe. You know. And when I got back. From the Arbeitsdienst, uh, uh, we went to, to France and I saw the Eiffel Tower in, in uh, Paris uh, out of the, the cattle cars. We were in cattle cars. You know. And um, I said, they have still a couple of pictures, uh, even in my book. And um, so when I got back and we got discharged after, that was three months or so that uh, we were in the, in the labor force. And uh, then I, uh, I was finally called to Munich to the Air Ministerium to uh, to be tested or evaluated, you know. and uh, that was we were about I think 40, 50 uh, uh, men that uh, that wanted to, to go into the uh, Luftwaffe, and so we were evaluated there. First of all, we had uh, theoretic uh, testing, you know, like school, what uh, what. Uh, um, knowledge you have and, and so on. And among uh, other things there was also a, a forum of eight Air Force or Luftwaffe psychologists and they were just sitting there looking at you and, and they were shooting questions at you. 
one after the other. You had to have an answer just like that, not uh, stumbling about it. Um, no, no. no, you had to have an answer right then and there. And uh, those have a short question for us. And I remember one: that What would you be? Yeah. What would you? Uh, what would you do if you had a wooden head? I would become an Air Force psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they had red heads, you know. but still it was an answer, just like yeah. that. That's what they were looking for, because as a pilot you have to make split decisions. You know. Also, they asked me, uh, suppose you're an officer and you are uh, you have a monocle and you go to a dance and uh, as you're dancing your monocle falls into the bottom of, of, of a lady. You know. <laughs> what would you do? I, thought, I would turn the lady around rub it by the feet and shake until the <laughs> monocle comes out. <laughs> and other such uh, questions. Also, for instance, um, uh, hold, hold a, a speech about uh, the love life of the cobblestones under the influence of the sun. <laughs> so now you had to stay there and tell them a story, you know. And I said, well, there was Hans, uh, the one cobblestone and Gretchen, and they <laughs> loved each other, and they wanted to, to get married. And all. They wanted to have, right away, you know, they wanted to see how, how fast your brain is working. So uh, now I, I was uh, uh, accepted, but uh, you didn't know that right away. Mm -hmm. So uh, at, at this 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 uh, interview, where you were alone, right in front of those eight psychologists, yeah, you know, that was that was really uh, uh, strainful, you know, and, and uh, uh, <laughs> I was sweating. <laughs> so when I was you glad when it was over. Oh, it yeah. sounded to me like I was there a whole hour, <laughs> it was maybe a half an hour or so, you know. So when you finally were accepted, yeah. where were you? Where were you sent? Where did you start? Oh your yeah, yeah. I, a week later, I got uh, a letter to go back to the air ministerium, and uh, also was told what I should bring with me, you know, uh, 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 clothing or whatever, and uh, uh, was then inducted there, right into the Luftwaffe. Uh, along with about 20 of those 50 that were tested, uh, the other state. And what year would that have been then? That was in, in uh, 1943, late, late in 43. Had there been any Allied bombing of Munich or around your area by oh, this yes. time? Oh yes, oh uh, yeah, uh, Munich was, was uh, already bombed pretty good, and, and Berlin and... Uh, so did you have bomb cellars or did you have places to, to go when the Yeah, there were came? bomb shelters uh, in, in the towns, you know, that uh, uh, otherwise in, in a small town, first in Fairbrook, you just went into the basement. Right. Uh, yeah. it, it was not actually a real bomb shelter, but it was a safer place yeah. to be. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my, my younger sister almost got killed by a strafing a P-51. Yeah. It came down, it was shooting at anything, it was moving. And my sister was in the, in the backyard there, and, uh, and a P-51 came and, and was uh, mm -hmm. uh, shooting at and, and the house got, got hit, and the, uh, the, the, the uh, debris landed in the, in the attic from the, from the uh, uh, roofing, you know, the tile, tile roofing, you know. So uh, she was almost killed, a bullet went right past her head there. You know. mm -hmm. So that, that's what I found out uh, when, I, when I came home later on. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, the, the uh, um, bombing was, was going on. I, I remember one time uh, in the middle of the night, uh, at night the, the, the English came. Yes. Uh, the English flew only at night, mm -hmm. and, and the Americans, and I admired them for it. They flew with their, with their bulks of 50 planes here, 50 there, 50 there, and they were flying right through the flak no matter what, and, and uh, one got a direct hit and exploded in, in the air. You know. And you, you saw that? I saw that whole uh, raining down there. And, and, uh, and then especially from the flak even, that, that, is, uh, that is funny, when you have, um, uh, when, you, when you hear, uh, after, after the, the, the flak stopped there, the, oh. all, all the, 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 the uh, 
uh, shrapnel is there. When they fly through the air, they, they, they make uh, whistling so, uh, uh, sounds, you know. That, uh, that was an eerie sound, you know, and they, they hear all that come down now, clink, clank, clink, 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 you, you hear the, 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 the uh, debris coming down, you know. If that flag fell on you, could it hurt you? A sure, it could, yeah, if you got hit directly, you know. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, somebody yeah. throws a rock at you, you know, sure. coming down from that height and being from the explosion pushed down, you know, so it, uh, it gets quite some speed. When, it, if, when that flies through the air and makes a noise, that it has quite some speed when that uh, fl uh, flag uh, hits you. You know, some, some people got uh, uh, injured, some even got killed by it. You know? mm, yeah. yeah. So where did you go for your training then, your first uh, Oh yeah, so uh, then I was called in for, for the induction into the uh, Luftwaffe, we were sworn in, and marched from there right to the railway station in Munich, and we were sent to the uh, 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 um, uh, basic training uh, camp. That was uh, in Oschatz near near Dresden, and Leipzig, in uh, 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 east of, of Berlin, you know, and uh, that's where we had the basic training, and that was especially just for the Luftwaffe basic training. You know. So it was actually a, uh, a Luftwaffe, uh, uh, they had a small airfield there too, and so uh, we had our basic training boot camp. And uh, that a any soldier had to go through basic mm -hmm. training, you know. And uh, then we were, I believe it was about three months, three, yeah, four months or so. Uh, and then in, in uh, January uh, 1944, I got into the uh, Luftkriegsschule number two, that uh, Air War School or Air Academy number two, Berlin Gato. I w would have liked to get to the number four in Fürstenverbruck, my hometown, yeah. but uh, no such luck. So I was sent to, to Berlin Gato, but uh, there I had the advantage. I had uh, an uncle in in Berlin uh, who was the owner of a chain of grocery stores, you know. and uh, uh, so when I went to uh, a weekend's visiting uh, uh, my my uncle and, and my my two cousins. Uh, 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 and, and uh, so I, I got really spoiled and got always extra goodies to take home. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that uh, that was uh, the the advantage I, I had there, you know. And uh, so uh, is this where they would decide whether you'd be a fighter pilot or a bomber pilot? Oh yeah. Pilot so now there we had again first glider training. I, I, as a matter of fact, I had in the Hitler Youth I made my A and B certificate, and uh, you need also this. The, the C certificate uh, before they let you into a motor plane. So and since I had the A and B, I was already ahead of most of the others. They had to start with the school glider, you know, the, the rutscher or just ground, uh, uh, ground glides, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, with, the, with the SG-38, which was actually uh, a, a, a glider, not not capable of soaring as a, as a real soaring plane does. It was strictly just a glider. It was just like an A-frame with the tail on it and the wing up uh, above you, and then uh, you were sitting on a, a like a plywood seat, and you had had your, your joystick here and and uh, and your foot foot pedals, and you were out in the open. There was no cockpit. You were just struck <laughs> in there. You had your your helmet on there, and then. Uh, uh, the, 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 the ground crew, there were five guys running this way, five guys that way with a bungee cord and a, a two men holding uh, crew in the back and then when the, when the uh, instructor said lows, then, then they, they let go and then, phew, you, you get you pulled like a, a catapult, you know. Mm -hmm. And at first, uh, our first uh, 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 rutscher, they call them rutscher, or, or ground, slide, ground slides. Uh, uh, we were not allowed to lift off. We were just supposed to go on the ground so to get the feel of it, you know. So you had to learn to fly right up by the seat of your pants. You, know? and you were all on your own. There was no no uh, no uh, flight instructor with you. There was a one seater, you know. Yeah. And uh, then later on, then we t took short hops, a little higher, and st straight down, and. Uh, and then later on, went, uh, that was a level ground, then later on we had to go uh, halfway up the hill and then uh, fly. 
and I had to apply then uh, when I was ready for it, uh, my A uh, certificate that was just uh, from halfway up the hill and the bungee cords pulled to the uh, uh, almost the capacity it had and then they let go and then you flew up and, and you had to stay straight and of course it unhooked by itself as you went over you know and then you had to stay uh, and you know, slowly down in, in one direction you had to be uh, um, I think minimum was 25 seconds or more you had to stay up in the air you know. and uh, I did it on the first uh, first try you know. And that, that was fun. And for the B certificate, we were all the way up to the top of the hill. And there you had to fly, it uh, was about one and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you had to fly a, a left turn, a right turn, straighten out, and then come down and land. You know. So uh, not, not full turn, but just a, a banking, you know. And uh, that, that was fun. Oh, that was such a great feeling to be alone and, and you. You're looking down there and uh, you're flying, you know. <laughs> that was a great thrill, you know. And uh, so in the, in the Luftwaffe, uh, the, the, the glider training had to continue because everybody had to make the A, B, and C. And I, since I was already ahead and had the, the B already, I, I could already train for, for the C. And the C was flown not in, a, not in a glider, it was in a soaring plane. That's what the the the, uh, uh, the Karanik, uh, uh, train uh, was it called? You know, that's the two seat that you fly with the, with the flight instructor, you know. And I had uh, some some uh, flights with him, and said, "Oh, you 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 are natural," he said. "You are natural. You you will be a good a good pilot," you know. And then uh, I I flew that also the solo for for my C certificate, passed to the flying colors. <laughs> And uh, then after we had everybody had to see, then we got the motor training. And our first uh, uh, trainer was the uh, um, uh, Focke Wolf 44 Stieglitz. Uh, it's an open cockpit biplane, two seater, mm -hmm. and it's very similar, almost identical to the American N3N Navy trainer. Mm -hmm. Only the Navy trainer uh, N3N is slightly larger than than the. the uh, Focke Wolf uh, uh, Stieglitz, and uh, that that was fun. That then uh, I, I I flew with uh, with the instructor, and uh, 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 he said that he said, "Oh yeah, you 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 will be a very good pilot," you know. So and he evaluated uh, each uh, uh, um, uh, man there for what he might be best suited for fighter pilot. Or bomber pilot or transport, you know. So I uh, I was good in aerobatics and I loved it, you know. And so uh, uh, I, I I was then further trained towards being a fighter pilot. We got then from the Focke Wolf 44 Stieglitz open cockpit biplane into an aerobatic biplane, the bigger Jungmann. The bigger Jungmann is also an open cockpit uh, two seater and is highly aerobatic and there I learned the uh, aerobatics so and that was that was great fun really that was oh I loved it <laughs> and when I, I soloed uh, in the Becker Jungmeister then I uh, I was uh, put into the, uh, the Becker Jungmann then I was put into Becker Jungmeister now the Becker Jungmann is a, uh, has an inline engine two seater open cockpit biplane while the uh, Becker Jungmeister is the same plane but with a, a radial engine and a one-seater. You know. And that was, at that time, the, the, the best uh, uh, um, uh, aerobatic plane in the whole world. And was still held the title till way after World War uh, mm -hmm. II. It was the best aerobatic plane. There was absolutely nothing that you could not do with a plane. Everything ever possible to fly with a plane, that plane did it and never broke up. So it, it, uh, even forward loops, flying for, forward loop, full, full forward loop, oh boy, then the blood goes in your head. <laughs> so uh, that, that, that was real fun. So when I graduated from, from that after so, uh, solo in there, then we were put into the Messerschmitt 108 Typhoon. 
that was uh, used uh, uh, that we had for a trainer. There, are, there were also already some uh, uh, Messerschmitt 109s with two seats in there as a trainer, but there were very, very few, and uh, our uh, uh, Air Force school didn't have one, so they had the Messerschmitt 108 Typhoon. And there you got the feel of a more powerful plane, and, and the flight characteristics are very similar to the 109. And uh, so after I graduated that, I, 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 it was minimum ti uh, timing. He said, you are natural. You are <laughs> And I loved it. So uh, anyway, when I, when I uh, got, uh, uh, had my, my solo in the 108, then I was put in the 109, uh, 109 Emil. Now the 109 Emils that we had as a trainer were actually return planes from the front because they got then in the meantime the Gustav uh, G uh, in, in, uh, at the front, and uh, the the E Emil was uh, absolute, absolute. <laughs> absolute. So uh, then, then I and let's. Uh, uh, there, I've got a, a picture of an ME 109 over yeah. here. Why don't you get your pencil out and yeah. let's let's go over and take a look at that, and yeah. maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. Oh yeah, yeah here. That, that, well, this is a, a 109 G Gustav. Okay. That had had uh, um, here. Uh, at least my, my plate, the G14A, uh, what I had. Uh -huh. We had two centimeter cannons here, too, uh, over the uh, 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 engine, yes. and a three centimeter gun out of the propeller knob. And, and a cannon, the, that's a cannon also? That's a cannon, can yeah, yeah. Shoot, okay. right, shoot right through the, through the uh, 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 spinner. Uh, to the, uh, spinner. And uh, that was an inverted engine, you know. And in between the cylinders, that's where the, the barrel oh. went through. And the bridge was right at my pilot seat. They had the bridge right in front here. So the, 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 the rudder paddles were far spread apart in order to have room for the, for the bridge of the three centimeter cannon. Oh. And when you pull the trigger on the three centimeter cannon, you, you feel it. You <laughs> that's know. what I was wondering. <laughs> there was a lot of recoil, I oh, would yes, imagine. That, that, yeah. that, you, that you felt, yeah. So anyway. Um, uh, this is also a, a, a Gustav here, you know, and uh, uh, the the Emil, for instance, had here uh, uh, braces, you know, for for the for the uh, uh, at the tail here. Oh, you know, uh -huh. for the, this is the Höhenruder and this is Seitenruder. Höhenruder is the elevator, and and uh, and the rudder is uh, uh, the Seitenruder, and then here the the ele elevator is the, the Querruder, Quer. Means uh, you know, um, uh, queer means uh, uh, opposite. You know, so because when 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 you you pull uh, uh, you put put your stick to to the left, you know, then then the 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 uh, uh, um, aileron on the left goes up, and this one goes down. So that brings up mm. this wing and puts the other one down to bank. You know, so. Um, well, that, uh, How was the visi visibility? The visibility uh, in, uh, on the ground was very uh, limited because uh, it's a tail dragger, mm -hmm. and when you when you have the engine and all in front of you, so you, you have to look <laughs> to the left and to the right, and as you go in, uh, uh, in zigzag uh, for, forward, you cannot go just oh. uh, straight forward for a taxi. And, you know, you have mm -hmm. to know where you're going. You know, yeah. as a matter of fact, we had no no uh, paved runways. So it was all grass fields yeah. uh, because the, the, the 109 was designed for that. As a matter of fact, the, the okay. um, um, uh, 109 uh, 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 Fargestell, the, the, the <laughs> Fargest the, the, the undercarriage the wheels, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but uh, landing gear, yeah, yeah. landing gear. Uh, it's very narrow because it is mounted oh. right here at, at the fuselage uh, on each side of, of uh, where the wing be begins, you know, uh, uh, and 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 it was mounted in here, and and, uh, and uh, the wheel was. Um, Embedded then uh, in in the wing, yeah, yeah. It had even mm -hmm. a slight uh, bulge here, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was known uh, to be difficult in landing and take off because of the, so the narrow, narrow landing yeah. gear, 
and you could easily ground loop it. Even uh, experienced pi pilots had ground loop experience. You know. <laughs> So, um, how about up in the air as far as visibility? Up in the, in the air is good, you know. Yeah. Uh, the only, of course, you, you didn't have much rear view here, you know. Mm -hmm. And the visibility on the, uh, see, this is an older uh, G here that, uh, uh, that must be, uh, could be a G6. Uh, they still had the, the original um, uh, canopy. Uh, I had already the more advanced one, what they call the Gallant Hood or uh, Ella Haube. Like a board. like a bubble canopy, kind of like the yes. B fifty one. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and uh, there we had better visible uh, vis better visibility on it. Yeah. You know? Of course, if you still had the the armored glass here on, on the front, that was uh, pretty pretty thick, you know, bulletproof. Uh, you know, and, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, now here, this is now the, the, the Gustav, now the... Yeah. the okay, the, uh, right now I, yeah. I'm going to uh, just take a, a second and change yeah. my tape. Yeah, okay. okay. Good, how are you doing? There's a cup of water if you'd like. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that would be fun. Okay, sure. Yeah, the dry mouth here. <laughs> yeah, you're doing just great. You're not too tired? Don't need to take a break or anything? Oh no. Okay. All right, so it's running. Okay. Yeah, we're ready. Now, as I said here, the the, the uh, Gustav has a, a, a bigger spinner here, more more rounded, oh. and uh, had a three centimeter cannon coming out. The uh, Emil had there a two centimeter cannon in there, and these were just machine guns. Okay. So that's why when when uh, when the uh, uh, the new Gustavs came out with the, the two centimeter cannon here. There was a little bulge on each side, in order to accommodate the the uh, the, uh, the, the bridge uh, uh, and the um, yeah, ammunition uh, uh, transport on it. So anyway, uh, the Emil had therefore a smaller spinner, more pointy. And had the two centimeter cannon on. So the Emil can you can distinguish always by the smaller spinner, and also having the braces here at at the at the um, uh, elevators. Uh, on both did sides. they um, uh, did they paint the spinners different colors for different outfits? That yes. Were, yeah. uh, well, uh, it, it was not for uh, different outfits. Uh, most of them had an, an, uh, at least an, an, an a JD fifty three. They had these uh, curled uh, snake there. Yeah, so right, that, uh, right. yeah. Uh, my 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 particular one had a, a, a half yellow nose, and the rest was black oh. on my plane. Yeah, yeah. I had the yellow six. This is a black six here. Mine was the yellow six, and I had also the white band, which actually was um, um, from the Mediterranean uh, 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 groups that uh, oh, okay. they had all the white white band and the white uh, uh, edges here. Mine was. Uh, uh, when they left the white band on because the plane, what I got, it was fairly new to, uh, because the, the, uh, uh, each pilot gets assigned to one plane and you stayed with it. You didn't fly any other and you had your own personal two mechanics that took care of it. You know. And uh, so when, when I got the plane, it was from, from, uh, uh, from, the, uh, from, the, uh, from the group that was in the Med Mediterranean, uh, so they left the white uh, band on there, and but only made the yellow tips on here. On the, on did, the did, did you have a Batman like they did in World War One? A Batman? Yeah, like a, wasn't he kind of a uh, your your uh, oh, what, what you would call him? A orderly. Orderly. Uh, orderly. Orderly or something yeah, no, like that. No, no, not really. <laughs> Uh, orderly, or, or like uh, a, well, we, we, I, I was in the rank of a, a lieutenant. I was yes. a, a cadet. And uh, uh, after uh, uh, after passing all the tests and all, so I was then uh, when I came to the front in the rank of a of a lieutenant, yeah. right now. Yeah. The um, I know I, most of the American planes, I think, just had machine guns, like six or eight machine guns right. in the yeah. wings, yeah. pretty yeah. much. And so uh, the Germans had had mostly. So what's what's the uh, what's the I mean. Which is more effective? What did you? Well, you see, there are also some some planes that had uh, machine guns mounted on a part underneath the wing here, and and, and the, the the barrel coming out in the center of the of the. Uh, 
I some mean, some of the ME 109s, you mean? Yeah, they, oh, they, yeah, did. yeah. Oh. they had they had two machine guns in there. Uh, of course, later on when they needed more armor, so they, that's when they changed the the front here to a three centimeter gun, a thirty millimeter, and this one here the twenty millimeters, two twenty millimeters, and these are the regular machine guns. It's a regular ammunition, but my plane didn't have that. I had just the three centimeter and, and the and the two cannon. So you never really flew a plane with machine guns. So no, you didn't. No, wouldn't. No. Um, but of course, the, the two centimeter was was shooting like the machine gun. You know. Oh, yes. uh, but the three centimeter, you had, uh, you could also make doom, 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 doom. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I I never used that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I could not get used to that defl deflector uh, gun sight. I I had my mechanics removed. So forget about it. I, I never was able to, to, to work that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you, how would and you? what was missing? So what I did, uh, I, 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 I used the tactic of Eric Hartman, the ace of aces that shut down 352 planes, you know, uh, flying close enough that you cannot miss. And I was shooting all the fives that I, I shut down. Uh, uh, with one shot out of the three centimeter cannon, and it, it, I never wasted ammunition. My mechanics always were wondering. I said, "You're coming home there. One shot out of the the, 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 the three centimeter missing, and all the other uh, uh, MOs here, you shot one down." You know, <laughs> they said, "Well, I I flew close enough." Almost as collision course. At one time, uh, I, I I was even hit by debris that fell off from. from the so um, at my, as a fact, my uh, well, I, I get a little bit here. Uh, after I, I graduated there, uh, we had very little, if any, uh, um, instrument training because I needed pilots uh, at the front, and and uh, uh, that was. Uh, uh, a minimum of time uh, had to be used to, to, to uh, uh, bring a, a pilot to the front. So it, uh, as, as long as you could fly the plane, and you could shoot, and we had some uh, uh, training in, 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 in ground shooting with it, you know. And there I already, already uh, noticed that with this deflector gun sight, I, I, I never could get that thing to work, and I always missed, because it is so awkward when you have to look like this. You're steering, and you have to because the gun sight was on the right, was not in the center, you know. So then I, I had my mechanics take that out. Um, right there, that was when I was on the Russian, uh, Russian front. At first, I still had to go to uh, um, uh, at the front when I was uh, called to the, to the front uh, to active duty uh, at the JG 53. In, uh, in or near Aachen, it was uh, uh, where our field was, and our w assignment. So where, where, where is in Aachen? Germany? Yeah, but where in Germany? Oh, that was uh, northwest Germany. Uh, you see, the, the English when they came in with their B-17s, uh, 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 I mean the Americans, Americans yeah. uh, when they came in with the B-17s, there was one group that came always in that direction, and they had they had uh, I mean t towards Aachen. And those that had to fly uh, to farther uh, 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 targets, like Berlin and so, they came in another direction. Now the other uh, 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 fighter uh, uh, escort that they had, they, were, they had P-51s. Ours, they, have, they came to ours, they had uh, British uh, Spitfires. So uh, I, I encountered only uh, Spitfires, Spitfires because we were uh, stationed near Aachen, so our group was the uh, always assigned to take the fighter escort away from the, from the bombers so that the neighboring Fokker World War 90 uh, uh, squadron had a free hand at, at, at the bombers, you know. And uh, they attacked front front, you know. And uh, so we were not allowed to, to attack the bombers. We were only assigned to take the fighter escort away so that the, the neighboring... Uh, this was probably before the B-17, the G model had that chin turret, 
Right. And so that the, the, the previous B-17s were very vulnerable to those front That's attacks. That's right. Attacks yeah. and even, not, even then. Even, uh, even then. With even them. then, they, they still there was the least resistance from the direct from the front. That's why they developed that uh, tactic, uh, you know. And if you could injure the pilot or the right. co-pilot. Yeah. You know, and the also the, the plane itself from the front uh, was a, a very small target, and, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the front profile, you know. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, uh, as I said, we had to take the fight escort away, and uh, and then we were involved with with the with Spitfires. And uh, when I was assigned there first, I was not allowed to engage into any uh, uh, dogfight. I was supposed to fly along as a Haitian. I was called Haitian or Little Rabbit before we had our first. Uh, Air yeah, victory, we are called little little rabbits, and uh, so I was uh, supposed to fly just as an observer, a, a, a wingman. I had an overleutnant. I had uh, I was a wingman for the overleutnant, and um, uh, so I was uh, supposed to absorb the technique of uh, air combat, not actively engaging into any combat unless I am attacked directly, then I had to defend myself, you know. So it was about, I think, five or six uh, missions that I flew as a Haitian and had no, no air victory, uh, and, and no, no, uh, no air combat. But now here, one uh, British pilot thought he had the easy target with me. He probably had observed me that I didn't make any efforts to engage into a, a fight, so he knew I, I was a, a, a newcomer there, you know. And, uh, uh, that went after me, but he was uh, bitterly disappointed <laughs> what happened? because we were flying for about good 15 minutes in air combat, and he got quite a few hits in, in my plane, you know. Mm. And I didn't shoot at all because I was not close enough to 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 to, to know that I wouldn't miss, you know. The fi finally, I just got them to fly right into my firing line, and and I. I I saw him come there and I pulled the trigger and I was almost hitting him, you know, and I pulled up and I hit his, his engine. That way, by, by, by uh, uh, just shooting it with a three centimeter cannon, when you get a hit, that does some damage that brings the plane down. Because you know, it, no it, 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 it explodes, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it explodes. That's the difference. It can't yeah, explode when it you explodes, hit something. It explodes, yeah. So yeah. The, no matter where you hit the plane, you, you, uh, you, uh, it will come down, you know. Yeah. Now, I, I hit him right there. At the, at, the, at the engine, I, I saw the impact and <laughs> the people flying in there, and he started smoking right away and had, had to uh, uh, roll over and he, he bailed out. You know. And that, uh, 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 that pilot uh, was uh, uh, Lieutenant Fred Browning uh, from uh, London. Really? And I met him that, that same day in the afternoon. Uh, because uh, uh, he came down right near our base and was then uh, taken prisoner by, by our uh, outfit there. And uh, so when, when I got back, uh, landed there, and I was uh, uh, led into our uh, briefing room there, and there, and there he, he was, <laughs> and uh, walked towards me and said, uh, he said, so you, you are the chap that got me now, jolly good for it, jolly good for it, you don't tap me <laughs> on the shoulder, you know. So, uh, and, and, and we were talking then uh, all afternoon uh, about uh, his training, my training, and, and he had much better training than that, and longer training than I had, you know. And he was a damn good pilot. What he got out of that Spitfire, I never thought it was possible. You know, that he was he's, uh, such a good pilot that I, I, I would say if he would have flown a, a Messerschmitt and I one on one, he would have got me just like that. So you you think your Emmy your Mister Smith was that a better plane was the better a plane yes I could outmaneuver him I could outmaneuver him yes so uh, only due to that fact that I had the better plane was I able to shoot him down otherwise uh, if he would have won a 109 he, he he would have got me just like that <laughs> so we were talking about uh, the like uh, and we had no animosity against each other I, I mean. We were comrades in arms. He had to do his job. I had to do my job. You know, it was as you or me, and that was your duty, your sworn duty to to, to fight. You know, and I was so glad that uh, I shot him down uh, uh, without killing him. You know? 
As a matter of fact, all the other uh, four uh, that I shut down later also all bailed out. And I thank God that I got through the whole war and didn't kill a single soul. <laughs> that is good feeling. I don't know how I would have lived with, with, with my conscience uh, uh, bothering me about having killed somebody. Even so, it was your duty and all, and it was war, but uh, still, I am strictly against killing. And I, I thank God that I didn't have to go. So, uh, were your other four victories over Spitfires also? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, uh, that was not my first air victory. Now I became a, a Hase, a rabbit. Now I was a rabbit. Not the little rabbit, I was a full rabbit. Or oh, <laughs> hare. A hare. I was a hare. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, later on, which I never made uh, after the after the tens air victory, and we never called them kills. We called them air victory, Luftsieg. No. Uh, then you were called an old hair. You know, <laughs> after ten, ten victories. You know, so I was now a hair. So I had my first air victory, and I was about uh, five, uh, six missions later that I was. Uh, uh, have my second victory with the Spitfire, but there was no air combat. It was uh, we, uh, after, after uh, our uh, after we were almost running out of fuel. Uh, we were called in uh, go home uh, and uh, fuel is low. <coughs> and on the way home, right also near near our base, uh, I saw a plane coming there from 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 the uh, uh, from twelve o'clock going down to, towards uh, 10 o'clock and uh, from the distance it looked like one of ours. So I said, why is he flying in that way? We are going that way. So I said, well, I better get behind him and below because I know the Spitfire, they had a rear view mirror on top. They could see what's going on in the back. <laughs> and so I was flying behind him and below him and I saw, oh, there's a Spitfire. Oh, oh. So I, said, I sneak up. And I flew up, and right as at collision course, uh, uh, I, I with one shot out of the three centimeter cannon, you no know, shot right his, his his tail off. The whole whole tail came out, and he he started rolling forward and bailed out. And uh, so he he never knew what hit him. So as he was hanging on a, on a chute, I circled him, and he saluted me. <laughs> I saluted back. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was a good feeling that uh, again, my second air victory uh, was uh, also without killing. You know. Yes. So what became of him, I don't know. I, I never met him uh, later. You know. Yes. But anyway, it, it it was a good feeling. So I had my my second my second air victory. But then I had a, a, a dry uh, spot. You know there. Uh, uh, Came home with a couple of hits in me, you know, but uh, I never was uh, able to, uh, to to shoot any any more down uh, at at the uh, from our base in, in Aachen, and uh, but then our group in October uh, uh, '44 got uh, transferred to the Russian front because the, the Russians came in and Hungary, you know, and uh, uh, part of the JG 53 was an assigned to go. To, to the Russian front, you know, and uh, that was uh, near Budapest. We were about a uh, little north of, of Budapest uh, in a field. was was not even a flying field. It was must have been a farm field or so, but but with, with grass or you know. And uh, there, I was uh, um, assigned. Uh, what our, our group uh, commander was Helmut Lip Lipfert, Hauptmann Helmut Lipfert. He uh, uh, survived the war uh, and had uh, 203 air victories. You know. So, and he was like a father to us uh, because we were all young, young ones. As a matter of fact, uh, the average life of a young pilot uh, was not more than a month uh, because uh, very limited training. And uh, especially uh, uh, many got lost because they had no no uh, um, uh, instrument training. They got, they got lost and had to land somewhere and crashed and killed. You know, so uh, that that uh, that happened quite often. You know. So anyway, but uh, 
this uh, Helmut Lippert, uh, uh, even though he was a, a, a captain, a Hauptmann, um, we were all Perdue. You know, in, in German language, when you have a, a stranger or higher uh, a respected person, you always say, Sie, Herr, Herr, haben Sie, uh, so and so, you know. Uh, but we were Perdue, like friends, you know, uh, because we were uh, his, his boys. <laughs> and he was like a father to us, you know. He was a very, very uh, 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 good-hearted man, you know. He looked out for, for, for us. And, uh, what was the overall feeling about Goring, of, of all you pilots, or Hermann Goring? What did you all think? Hermann Goring? Goring, yeah. Goring. Well, uh, he, he was, uh, um, you know, uh, very much uh, so-called disliked <laughs> because of his uh, um, um, uh, calling the German fighter pilots cowards, because uh, uh, and, and Gallant took uh, took up uh, uh, defending uh, us fighter pilots for it. We were no cowards, you know. And and uh, and he, he, Göring himself called us cowards because he didn't bring enough uh, air victories. Uh, home. Even so, we were always always outnumbered. We had we, we, uh, at, at least like. Uh, 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 four, five to one or more, uh, we were outnumbered, so we had to fight practically losing, losing battle. And in 1944, I got to the front, we knew already that we uh, were fighting a losing battle and, and, uh, and that the war was uh, uh, lost. You know. But we had to do our duty and had to fight for our fatherland as, as we were ordered to, and that was our sworn duty. So we, we did our duty the best we could, but then being called cowards, you know, that, that, was, that was bad, so that nobody liked, uh, liked that, you know. So, and uh, so at, at that time, uh, I, I was, uh, after I had now, uh, oh yeah, in, in, uh, on the Russian front. Where, I, where on the Russian front were you? Near Budapest, near, near, near Budapest. Okay. And uh, our opposing Squadron on the Russian side, they had Russian uh, Ratas, the uh, uh, Polikarpov uh, uh, I-16s, which was, by the way, already so fire, uh, uh, fighting the 109 in the Spanish Civil War. Oh. Over in the meantime, they had it also further developed, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, but nevertheless, they had. That, that was not the Yak. Uh, well, no, 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 no. It was different. That was a uh, had a pretty a snubby nose there, you know. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, and uh, had that. Um, uh, what, what was it called again? That place? Polikarpov oh. I-60. Okay. And uh, and they got the name uh, Rata, which means a rat, a rat, in the Spanish uh, oh. Civil War. You know, mm -hmm. They were called rats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, the, the the Russians had anything flyable. They, they, they threw up on the front because they, they were just scraping the bottom of the barrel like the Germans were, you know. And uh, without uh, Americans' help, they never would have made it. They had then uh, later on uh, the, uh, they got the American planes, the the, uh, uh, the Hurricane, and um, uh, what was it? The, the the one with the mid-engine P P39. Yeah. P yeah. 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 So uh, it it. Um, uh, it, it, it was actually to, to, to my advantage that we, we had the Ratas against us. So we were always patrolling, and they were patrolling, and then we had uh, air uh, combat. Uh, and um, I was able to shoot, shoot down three uh, Russians. Uh, in, in a now, were there any bombers involved in this? Or no, was there were no, just, no bombers. Just no. fighters against fighters. Just, just the fighters, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, they, they were flying patrol, whatever, and they were shooting at anything that uh, was <laughs> flying there, and so, so did yeah. we, you know. But we were flying only in good weather, because uh, on a cloudy day we couldn't, we had no, no instrument training, so uh, when, when, <laughs> when we couldn't fly, we went uh, rabbit hunting, you know. And uh, uh, I, 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 I remember that uh, uh, rabbit that I shot, you know, oh, so awful that poor animal that was crying like a baby when I hit him and, and uh, had, had to put him out of his misery and I felt so bad about it. I killed that poor rabbit, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's, um, it's it's something that um, is against my nature, killing. No, killing is, is no, it's not for me, no. 
And that's why I'm so grateful that I got through the war without having to kill any, anyone. You know. But anyway, I, I shot those uh, three down, so I had now five air victories. Yeah, and I ace. got, I got uh, an ace here in Germany. It's not, nothing, five doesn't count. You, know? <laughs> uh, you had to have uh, at least uh, f uh, later on 40 air victories before you got the Knight's Cross. At first, at first it was uh, 30, it was 30, and then later on it's 40, and then more, you know. And uh, uh, so uh, I, I got recommended for the EK-1. The EK-2, they, they completely ignored, I, I don't know. I should have gotten the EK-2, number two first, and then the EK-1. EK is Eisenhower's Kreuz, Iron Cross, Iron Cross. Oh. No. And uh, so I was recommended for the Iron Cross uh, number one, and the paperwork was all ready, and, and, and it was on the way to our outfit. I may have gotten it the day when I didn't return from from uh, air combat, that I would have gotten my, my EK one, you know. So, but I not, so therefore I never got it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, now the the uh, uh, since I had the five air air victories, I was then in on March fourth. 1945. Uh, it was a beautiful, bright day, and uh, and, and uh, we were flying. Uh, over, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the, the Russians came over to, to our side, and we, we took off and, and engaged them in, in uh, 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 dogfights again. And uh, in in that dogfight, I hit that uh, uh, my sixth uh, air victory. Um, I hit him in a gas tank, and he was not on fire. But the gas evaporated, became like a white smoke streak, and that's what they call it. He had the white flag out, you know, and immediately he dived down. We were about 3,000 meters at that time, you know, he dived down to treetop level, and I followed him, and I was not shooting at him then because uh, he wouldn't have had the uh, chance to bail out at, at treetop level, you know. So I figured, well, he, he tried to get back to, to behind his. Uh, uh, Lines, you know, and I, I was figuring or hoping that he would have to go down, still on our side, and then I would uh, get him in the gun sight uh, 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 camera uh, photograph as a forced landing. Then it counts as a full air victory. You know. But as he was flying towards uh, uh, the front, all of a sudden we were passing the front, you know, and I didn't realize it. And I figured, well. Well, I follow him anyway, but whenever he lands, I, I get him in my gun camera, and then all of a sudden, ground fire came up and hit me, and I, I started, but my, my plane, the engine started to, to sputter, and uh, the, the, the cockpit filled with smoke, smoke so I had to jettison the, 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 uh, canopy. the, the uh, canopy, so that I could see where, where I was going, and my engine was on fire, uh, to look for an open space where I could uh, set her down, you know, and uh, uh, as a belly landing, you know. And there was still snow on the ground, so and luckily I found an, uh, an, an opening st streak there between forested area where I could set her down and, and set her down in a belly landing. And the, and the 109 is known for holding up pretty good in a, in a, a belly landing. And so I set her down and jumped out of the plane and uh, just barely made it away from it and it blew up. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I, I was hiding then in the, in the woods uh, nearby to, to uh, try to get back uh, in the night uh, towards the front. It was only about, about maybe four or five miles behind the, the Russian lines, you know. And uh, so I, I was uh, uh, burying my, my papers, what I had uh, in, in, in the ground there with my survival knife and, and uh, to hide it, you know, and, uh, and then uh, I, I, I figured, well, now I, I will try to go, I had my, my uh, um, uh, compass, uh, uh, in a, you know, survival compass, uh, try to get back in, in, the, in the direction of the front to, to sneak back, if possible, you know, but uh, unfortunately next morning in the, at dusk they caught me and uh, uh, the, the, the Russian, they, they, they almost killed me. 
that they, uh, they hated the German pilot because they, they inflicted so many uh, uh, casualties and, uh, and, and uh, damage uh, to, to the Russians. So uh, were they, they uh, Russian soldiers? Uh, Russian soldiers, yeah. They they hit me with their gun butts and cursing at me and hit me and and, and uh, knocking the breath out of me. I was on the ground. They were kicking me, cursing and all. And, and finally, a, a Russian major came by and and stopped them from, from killing me. You know. And he spoke a perfect German, like I speak German, like without accent or anything. Yeah, I, I thought that he may, may have been a German, <laughs> but anyway. But at the same time, he was speaking fluent Russian with the, with the Russian soldiers. You know. hmm. But when he was speaking to me in German, there was without accent. And I, I was wondering, you know. <laughs> Anyway, he stopped them from, 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 from killing me, and, and, and they, I was marched back to, to their uh, uh, headquarters, which was a, 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 a farmhouse, abandoned farmhouse, and I was interrogated there. And, uh, and then also, uh, um, uh, since, since I, uh, he asked me if I can draw maps, you know, so I, said, oh, I, I can draw maps, which I did as a matter in our outfit, because we, we, we didn't have uh, too, too many maps, and uh, so we had to make duplicates, and uh, I, I was drawing uh, duplicates of maps uh, to, for, for our uh, other uh, pilots. And uh, so uh, he asked me if, if I can draw maps. I said, yeah. I, uh, as a matter of fact, I was doing them anyway for our outfit. Uh, yeah, I had to do now drawing maps, uh, copying maps for the Russians, you know. And that was only that, uh, that one, uh, that one, uh, uh, Night there, uh, you know, the, the, the first night to, uh, the, all through during, during the day, you know, and then at night uh, uh, I was, uh, uh, oh, as a matter of fact, there were even some other German infantry uh, uh, prisoners of war there already, you know, and so uh, when night came there, we, we got a bowl of kapusta. And now, kapusta is uh, um, cabbage, and uh, as a matter of fact, the, the title of my book. Is another bowl of kapusta. <laughs> that was our main food. What we what we got. Now at the front there, that kapusta what we got there was was a very good healthy soup with some uh, uh, morsels of meat in there and uh, other vegetables and and, and fat ice cream on top too. So it, it, it was very tasteful and, and good. And the bread what we got there was German commissbrot. That was captured by by the Russians, you know, and they must have had a whole bakery there, <laughs> and uh, so we got German commissbrot and, uh, and and the, and the kapusta, and then we were assigned to to uh, um, in, in, a, in a barn there. We had to uh, sleep then on on the ground. And next morning, uh, I was called out by a guard, and uh, he motioned to me, "Idi, Idi, go, go." Uh, uh, and showed me where I had to go. So, and he was following me be, be, behind me, you know. And uh, at first, it was close behind me. And as we were uh, uh, coming away from the farm there, over, over the field, then he stayed farther back, and, oh, more back. And I said, she was now he, he will kill me for sure now, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I expected him really to, to, to shoot me. You know. And so I look. I look in the back, and I see him walking in my footsteps. Oh, because of the minefield, <laughs> right? And, and that didn't didn't uh, uh, dawn on me yet. You know, why is he behind so far, about twenty feet behind me, and uh, stepping in my footsteps? You know, and then when we uh, uh, came to the next. Uh, uh, farm uh, village there where, where they had more German uh, 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 prisoners there uh, and we arrived there and, they, and, and one of the Germans said, hey buddy, did, did, did you just come across that field there? I said, yeah, yeah. Didn't you know there was a minefield? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. I, 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 that stuff. So my guardian angel really led me through there and, and, and as a matter of fact in my book I have other occasions where my guardian angel saved my life and, and, and one, uh, uh, three times in one day, my guardian angel saved my life. You know. So, and this one was another 
miracle, you know, that I walked into to the minefield without tripping up, uh, mine getting blown up, you know. So that, uh, that then we were about um, uh, close to a hundred men there, you know, and um, then we were uh, 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 put on a march uh, toward the hinterland where the Russian had already their wider tracks. Uh, uh, changed from the European narrow track to their wider ones because okay. the Russian railroad is uh, they have bigger uh, cars and have wider tracks, you know. And uh, as as they advanced, you know, they they changed their tracks to the wider one, and we had to march to that point, which was about I would say 100, 120 kilometers uh, south of of Budapest, and so we had to march there. Now that. Um, um, at March, into the, the, many of the German uh, soldiers they were wounded once and sick once and all. And as we were marching and, and they couldn't go uh, anymore, they, they fell to the side and poof, they shot him right there. You know. And I thought that it was every day, it was, was a, 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 about a week that it took us to, 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 to uh, march there from day to day. We were sleeping out in the field in the open. And there was still night cold, uh, cold nights and partially snow on there. And during the day, it started already melting and mud on the road there. And so all these carcasses of dead horses that uh, blown up like like balloons, uh, and uh, uh, all uh, dead tanks and, and uh, uh, military equipment, trucks and, and wagons uh, uh, was all scattered all, all around and uh, here we were marching every day and uh, one after the other they got, got shot you know when they couldn't go anymore and also when we were sleeping overnight on an open field the next morning there uh, many were just dead they, they died overnight you know they were just left there not not buried or anything and uh, on that march that uh, I was uh, Called out by the guard, uh, uh, you know, motioning <laughs> to me, here, here, come here, you know, here, sit down, you know. In, in Russian, I couldn't understand the Russian, but I, from the gestures he did, I knew what he wanted, you know. So I figured, okay, now, now he will shoot me, you know, and uh, I was ready for it. Said my, my prayers, you know, and. But then he, he pointed to my flight boots. I had the, the, the German pilot flight flight boots, you know, uh, the, uh, lambskin inside and all. Yeah. He wanted to have my boots, so take them off. Yeah, and so he took his off, and he gave me his, <laughs> full of holes and all, and mine fit him, and uh, and and uh, uh, his fit me. So uh, I was glad that he wanted only my boots and not my life, you know. Yeah. So then uh, uh, he he motioned me go back in, into the uh, column there and, and, and march, you know. And uh, then later on, when we when we stopped there, he came and brought me a piece of bread, you know, <laughs> for for the for the uh, thing. And then uh, uh, he pointed at my boots and said, "Carasol, carasol." He said, "Okay, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, carasol." <laughs> and I was I was so happy that he didn't kill me. You know. But I, I really expected that he, that he would kill me. So, but finally, when we um, uh, uh, came at one one night, uh, he found um, or the the, uh, the guards, you know, found an abandoned uh, uh, farm there, and we were finally uh, uh, built it, you know, uh, overnight in a, in a farm, in a barn, and and the and the, and the uh, house, you know, and I was lucky enough to get. Into the house assigned, and we had to flip, uh, sleep on the floor there. And I, uh, as I lay there, I looked at the bookshelves, and I see there a familiar, a familiar uh, uh, spine of a book. It says uh, the Holy Bible, uh, scriptures. You know, in German, in German, I said the Heilige Bible. Uh, so I, so I, I took it, you know. It was a nice, nice Bible with, with the, the, the gold uh, etching on the, on the, the pages there, and it was about uh, what eight by ten or so. And uh, 
So I, I, I looked at it and there was a dedication from a father to his son the, 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 for, for the Bible, you know. And so I figured, well, I, I take that Bible with me, you know. And I, I was uh, uh, putting it in a, in a, a bread basket that we had, uh, not ba a basket, bread, a broad boitel that uh, is a, it's a canvas bag, you know, for 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 bread and, and stuff, you know. So it fitted right right in there. So I, I figured that is nice to to have the Bible with me, and I was reading it all the time. And later on, that Bible saved my life. And that secret, how I survived in Russia for those three years, is in my book. Oh. <laughs> I won't tell you what, what the secret is, okay. <laughs> but it has something to do with another bowl of kapusta <laughs> and the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it, um, I, I had that, I had that, uh, uh, I was reading the scriptures, I was glad that I had it, you know, and in German at the same time. Yes. Yeah. So then we finally arrived uh, at the Jasper Rainy, that's a, a, a town about 100, 120 miles, uh, uh, kilometers south of Budapest, where they had already their tracks widened. And there they had a, a train waiting for us with cattle cars. And each cattle car had uh, uh, 100 men put in there. There were uh, 50 men on this side, 50 on this side, 25 on the bottom and 25 on the or that they built like a shelf there, you know, bunk, you know. And so there were hundred hundred men in there, you know. And a little potbelly stove in the in the center of the of the uh, of the uh, cattle car and at the side doors, the sliding doors on the side here on each side, you know. So uh, um, they had for, as a as a latrine <laughs> they had like a, a piece of gutter that uh, they, they 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 had nailed on the edge of, of the of the uh, uh, sliding door there and, and closed it so that there was a slot open of about four or five inches or so that was, was open, you know. And and, and this, this was your yellow treat, you know, there. <laughs> and they had like a wooden stick there to, to push the debris down, you know. <laughs> and you go in there. And then still uh, a lot of uh, 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 prisoners died know, from, uh, uh, because they were wounded and they, uh, the wounds were not taken care of, they, they had gangrene and uh, uh, died, others were sick and, and, uh, and either they died, they kicked them right off the plane, uh, off the train and, and left them there. You know. So, uh, and then we were about three weeks, good three weeks, or almost four weeks, we were on, uh, on the train going towards Russia and uh, finally landed uh, or ended up in Grüntal uh, near Penza, Penza at the Volga River uh, in the Kazan uh, district. And uh, Kazan is one of the main uh, towns over there. And uh, there we got into our camp. Yeah. And uh, so we were in a, in a camp, uh, was adjusted. I think the second or third day we, we, we got there, uh, the camp commander held a roll call and uh, we were counted uh, 4,864 4, men, so not quite 5,000. And the camp commander in Russian said, Skora the boy, Skora the boy, soon you will be home, the war is over. You know. Oh, and we were so glad. Okay, the war is over now. Soon we get home. You know. So and that was on May 10th, 1945. And uh, uh, so we were working. We, we sent to, to, to workplaces. Uh, first we were working in a, in a factory where they manufactured Russian uh, uh, uniform material. You know, they, so we had to sort the fleeces there from the sheep and, 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 and goats, uh, that uh, the fleeces that they used for, for wool, you know. And uh, there we were working with, uh, with um, um, women and children from the so-called Volga Germans. They, they were speaking German, they, they were uh, uh, people that, that uh, uh, you know, um, yeah. at, at, Near the Volga River, they called the Volga Germans, the Volga Deutschen, and uh, and 
the men were all called into the war, and uh, they never uh, heard or th saw from them anymore. They were just the women and children, and they were working in the factory, and we were uh, also working there. So we had at least during the day um, we had something to eat at lunchtime, you know, and uh, uh, kapusta, of course, you know, <laughs> and uh, the uh, the Russian bread. Now. The Russian bread, uh, if you compare it to a dog biscuit that you buy here in, a, in, a, in the United States in a supermarket, that, that dog biscuit would be cake compared to what, <laughs> what they call bread. Uh, the, the funny way they, 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 they make the, the bread there. They have, uh, first of all, a mixture of all grains. Mainly, of course, uh, rye, but uh, barley and oats and lots of wheat too, all ground up without waste, with all the shells, especially from the from the from the oak uh, and, and and the the uh, 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 barley, these spiny sticks there. <laughs> the, all, all that is in the so-called flour. Now they pour that into a, uh, a 50 gallon oil drum and add uh, sourdough from the previous batch into it and water and then uh, uh, stir it around with, uh, I, I call it like a, 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 a boat paddle, you know, the mm -hmm. boat uh, 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 or, uh, 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 oar, yeah, like an oar, yeah. <laughs> they they uh, 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 mix it up there to, to, to uh, like a soup. And then they took uh, um, a scoop and, and scooped it out and filled it into into forms, into tin tin forms. There were round, round tin forms, and they were a little uh, uh, beveled on the side. And they filled that about three quarter full, and then they put it in the oven and baked it. And that that uh, uh, when it was filled too much, then it was over running, and and it came over the side. But most of them uh, they were filled just so that when it was rising and then built a very thin crust on the top and on and, and the side, you know. So when that was finished baking, I think about three or three, four hours, they baked it there. And uh, then, then they, they, they dumped it out and cut it into, into uh, portions. Now, we were supposed to get 500 gram or one pound of bread a day. And uh, since, uh, uh, since this is by weight, you know, they, 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 cut, they cut the portions there, not pound for, uh, for uh, uh, a portion, uh, quarter pound portion, because we had to fulfill a certain norm of work, a certain amount, which they call the norm. We had to fulfill the norm in order to earn our 500 gram of bread, which we were supposed to get according to the Geneva uh, 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 conference as prisoners of war, we were supposed to get one pound of bread. But we had to earn that. If we didn't uh, fulfill the norm, and they made sure that we couldn't fulfill the norm, because as soon as we came close to it uh, to achieve it, then the norm got up higher. They had to produce more work, you know, and uh, so we got only a quarter pound of bread, 125 gram, and they were cut into into uh, uh, you know, slices of about one inch thick or so and then put on a scale, and when it was a little too little, then, then they put a, a, a little supplement on top of it and stuck it there with, with a, like a toothpick, you know. And uh, so we get our, our quarter pound of bread. Now that, that was our ration for the whole, whole day. And since that so-called bread had 75% water in it, that dough was so wet and cleachy that when you put the dough together, made a ball for it, and throw it on the wall, and was sticking there, yeah. like like clay. You know? <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, now by being uh, 75 percent water on the inside, the outside crust, you know, was very thin, and we were always striving to get an outside piece with the with the with the uh, 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 crust on it because it had more substance. So actually, you got more grain uh, uh, with a drier piece of the crust than the wet piece in, in the center. So uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it, it was the, and the Russians were eating the same bread. You know, they, they, there was one bakery that was doing it for the civilians as well as for for the for the prisoners of war. You know. 
But then uh, we, we were supposed to get the kapusta, you know. But the kapusta at our camp that we got was nothing but green water because the outer leaves from from a cabbage head that you get thrown away here in the supermarket, the limp outer leaves, you know, that's what they cooked for us. Without any fat or meat or anything, they could just cook, cook the, the, the green leaves there, you know. And uh, we used to say, more eyes looked into the soup than out, because there were no fat eyes swimming on top of it. So two eyes looked in, but no eyes looked out. <laughs> And you were lucky if you found on the bottom of your of your can uh, a, a leaf, or a little bit leaf on the green, uh, green outer leaf from, from the cabbage head, because the rest of it, the good white cabbage head, was sold on the black market. We saw every night the the, the pony wagons, you know, uh, horse and buggy. Uh, they, they they were uh, the the food what was delivered for us to to to, to be our food was sold on the black market. We, we, we get the green leaves to, to eat there. You know. So, uh, and then work up to up to 19 hours a day, uh, and you have nothing to eat but this kapusta, the so-called bread. You go down fast. You know. And uh, then we were working on the, on the cold shows, planting potatoes by hand, all with the stick to dig a hole and uh, drop a little seed potato in and, and we would watch sharply that we wouldn't eat those potatoes and if we did, and some did, you know, they got hit unmercifully with, with the gun butts and kicked and cursed. And, uh, as a matter of fact, these guards, especially the young ones, uh, 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 they were fanatics. Uh, they were constantly cursing at us and, 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 and hitting us with the gun wherever they, they could. We were always uh, happy or glad that, that when, when we had some older guards, they had, they had, they had more compassion uh, uh, for us, you know. And uh, but this, these curses, uh, you know, they, uh, it's, it's, too, it's too bad to translate that uh, because it, it's such such a bad bad uh, curse out there. Yup for you, mat. It is a huge yup for you. Don't worry, robot, robot, robot. You work, 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 quick. But don't worry, be straight, be straight. Yeah, be straight, quick. You work, quick. You know. So that that was uh, what you heard all day long. You know these curses and and, and uh, all that. Well, uh, anyway, up to 19 hours we had to work. Uh, we worked on the coal shows. We worked uh, in the forest. We had to cut down trees. The trees we had to cut into beams all by hand with with a hatchet to cut into beams, and with the beams we had to build then at the Volga River shore we had to build uh, reinforcement. We had to build these uh, uh, like uh, uh, boxes, you know, cross beams mm -hmm. that will, will, uh, would then uh, be filled with uh, with stones and rocks to to uh, reinforce the the uh, um, the shore of the river where. It was always eating into the farmland, you know. So that uh, to to prevent that, they they, they built or we we had to build those uh, reinforcements. And maybe we had even uh, to drive uh, uh, 20, 30 foot poles, like telephone poles, uh, in, into the into the ground to support these boxes there, you know. And uh, always uh, the, under the most primitive uh, conditions, you had, for instance, as a ram. To, to drive those poles down it was like a, a, an oak uh, uh, stem uh, 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 about four foot high and about uh, two foot wide or so, two or even more, uh, with eight handles attached to it around. And then you were with eight men standing there, each one had the handle there and that lift up and, and, and the, the four men uh, also German had to, to sing uh, some some kind of a, of a lumberjack uh, 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 call there. Dee da wo wo boom boom. Dee da dee da wo boom. You know they had to lift it up and down, commando, and push it down. And then each time that the the, the the pole got deeper, that we had to build the platform lower again. And so it took about a day just to drive one of those uh, uh, poles into the ground there. You know. Um, of of the those almost five thousand, 
in that oh, camp, how many, oh, yeah. how, right. many come back how many survived? To, to come back to that, right, at this roll call there on May 10th, 1945, uh, 4,864 men there. Uh, and we thought, all right, soon we will be home. But no effort was made to send us home. We worked the summer through, the fall came, the winter came, with 40, 45 below zero, and uh, if you if you if you seen the the movie Doctor Zhivago, yes. I know. There you see there was Russian winters, and I went through three of those. You know. So uh, after the after the uh, first winter in the spring of 1946, there were 384 men left out of the 4,864. 384 in our camp. Now that was the same story in all the other camps. There were in the whole area, in the Penza Kazan area, there were at least 40, 50 of those camps, you know. And, uh, uh, and that was the same story. There were only a couple of hundred men uh, survived the winter there. You know? And uh, so they took that in the spring, they took all these leftovers and put them into a camp to make again to four or five thousand men. And working through through the year again to the next winter, the same story, only a couple of hundred left. And then the third winter, the same thing. So when you figure mathematically, that is 99% of all prisoners died there. You know. And I was lucky 1% survivor that uh, that made it with the help of, the help of God and How much the Bible. Yes. <laughs> How much did you weigh when you went in, and how much did oh, you weigh when at, you came but out? But I first finally wound up in the prison hospital that was in the first, first year, right after the first winter. Um, we were waited when we got into the hospital. Now the hospital was uh, actually a converted school, a pool house, you know, with the, still with the uh, uh, lock cabin type, you know. And, uh, and so they, they, we, we were, uh, put into, into that so-called hospital, you know. And when we were uh, arriving here, we were weighted, I weighed 31 kilograms. Now that is 62 uh, German pounds. Uh, equivalent to about 66, 67 American pounds. 167. Yeah. So I was a walking skeleton. I was so, oh, I, I, wait, had, wait, wait, wait. I had the, 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 just the skin hanging on, on me. I could go around with my my uh, a middle finger and thumb, I could, right above my knee, I could get, I could get uh, and close my finger. So there was nothing but the bone and, and skin. So and you, skin were, hang. you were 67 pounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. 67 pounds. Now when I was walking there on a the wooden floor, it had wooden wooden floor at the school there, uh, barefoot, it sounded like I, I had wood shoes on. The click and the clock, there were my bones. Hmm. On it, and it was hurting because there was no more no more meat to, to uh, pulse the bones, you know, I, I was walking practically uh, on my bones uh, on the floor, you know. And, and, and I was lying back like this and, and felt through my stomach, I could feel my backbone. <laughs> and I could count every one of my ribs, you know, were sticking out there and my arms here, I could see the two, the two bones, the L, L, L and spike here, I don't know what's an English Radi word for radius it. Radius and all. Yeah. And, and same thing here on the legs, you know, the, the two bones. On the upper leg, you had just that one thigh bone, you know. You could see that owner was just loose skin hanging there, you know. And uh, uh, luckily, I was, uh, uh, you know, found, found by, by, uh, um, by uh, a, a Russian doctor there, you know, when they came uh, inspecting uh, them and how our health is there. Um, so I was sent then to, to the hospital because otherwise uh, I, I may have died. You know. Well, you're working up to 19 hours a day and you have practically nothing to, to eat and your body goes down fast. And, uh, we, we've got about three or four minutes left to go here. Yeah, okay. okay. So uh, uh, to, to no hunger, real hunger. That is hunger, what you went through there. But you're just hungry, or, or you could eat a horse and say, I'm so hungry. That, that hunger that you had there, that is, the, that is the real hunger. And that is eating your body, you know, because you're working off uh, your, your, your body, your muscles, everything goes. And uh, 
that that is that is really bad. Well, anyway, I went through three three years in there, almost three years, and then I finally was sent home for the reason that I was useless to them. I was constantly passing out. I couldn't work anymore, and I was too tough to die. Those that died, you know, that they, they, they got uh, put. Uh, Along the, 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 the prison fence there, naked, the clothes they sold on the black market, you know. And uh, in the winter time, it was 40, 45 below zero, the frozen bodies, you know, arms and legs broke off from the, in the night. The wolves and, and, and uh, wild dogs came and ate them. It still was the hardest part of what I had to write in my book, the remembrance of those poor souls. And, and I, I could have been one of them, you know, but I, I made it through with God's help. You know. it's, it's, it's hard. It, it's, it's so hard. That's why I didn't want to write that book, because I didn't want to be reminded of the bad times that I had there, because it is... Uh, is something I, ha I had nightmares about it, just thinking about it. When I came here to America, finally, after I, c I got home, and uh, I made myself a promise to, to leave all my life behind, whatever was, forget it, and start new a new life here, and no more thinking back. And uh, but now, finally, my friends and, and uh, fellow members of the organization that I belong to, you know, they said, you've got to write your story.